Hi, I'm Paula Rivera. This tutorial covers the basics of comic book coloring. It features a time-lapse video of an Iron Man cover. Once I'm done with the pencils, I send it to my dad, Joe Rivera, for inks. Once he's finished, we scan the artwork and convert the file to a bitmap TIFF. Then it's ready to be flatted. My assistant, Orpheus Collar, usually does this in about an hour. Then we're ready to start coloring. The inks layer is set to multiply mode, which allows the flats from the layer below to show through. From then on, the process is really all about trial and error. I use the magic wand tool to select different patches of color, and then I use the hue saturation brightness command to adjust those colors individually through the three variables. This video is shown at about eight times normal speed, so you can see it's just a lot of the same process over and over again. Now what I will do sometimes is jump ahead and create a layer for things like glows, anything uh, that is going to have a haze around it. I'll put on a separate layer, set that layer mode to screen, and then just pick a color and airbrush it over the spot that I want. Sometimes the flats aren't exactly the way I want them, so I do have to go in and manually draw in more shapes. To do that, I use the pencil tool, and uh, it's just a question of finding the, the color that I do want and putting it where I want it. That's the same process that I use for two-tone coloring. I will just take the pencil tool, go in, pick either a lighter or a darker color, and then create shadows or highlights depending on what the cover calls for. If I have a section of smaller elements, I will often treat them as a group. I'll make sure they're all the colors that I want them to be, and then select them all and change the color globally. I also use what are known as color holds. This is where you take the inks and replace them with something other than black. As you can see here, I did it on the legs and in the background, and it's just a way to make something seem like it's a different texture or uh, also you know, turn it into something that falls back in space. It's a great technique to use for things like energy projections, anything that glows, really. I try to keep most of the color values at uh, maybe about 75% at the darkest, sometimes 80%. It, it's really just all about feel. The main thing is, since this is comic book coloring, uh, you always want to make sure that the inks stand uh, out as their own thing. They're what gives the drawing uh, its definition, so you, you don't really want to compete with those. Uh, when I was first starting out, I would try and, and really mimic almost what was realistic painting, and that would just make the inks get lost in the darkness of the other colors. In addition to grouping things by color, I also use the channels palette to save selections. This is really convenient when you're dealing with large groups of things, such as the tables in the foreground. Once I'm happy with the basic color scheme, that's when I really get down to the actual rendering of the piece. I will do the two-tone coloring, which is just picking a lighter or darker color. Here I am creating a highlight on uh, the yellow part of Iron Man's armor. While this isn't the final stage, it's pretty close. Um, after this, I would then go in and start to render things a bit more with things like the burn tool or even uh, the airbrush. Uh, the very final stage is to create a filter over the entire piece that gives it a bit of grain. That's just something I like to do with my covers. That concludes this video tutorial. For more information and technical details, please visit my blog, paularivera.com